Greetings and welcome to episode 13 of the Math Olympiad lecture series. Today we'll be looking into the binomial theorem. The objective of today's lesson will be for students to be able to construct Pascal's triangle to apply the binomial theorem to expand polynomials that are of cubic or higher powers, as well as to solve Olympiad type problems using the binomial theorem. This is an O-level topic, and there are many O-level type skills like finding a specific term. They are also important, but I won't be covering them in this video. I'll probably make an O-level revision video in the future to cover those types of questions. But before we go into the theorem itself, let's have a look at this question. How many ways can you travel from point A to point B if you can only travel along the edges and if you can only move right or downwards? For example, you could take this light blue path, two steps right, five steps down, and three steps right. But you can't take this dark blue path because of that one red step upwards. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. The problem solving technique here is to start with a simplified version of this problem. So instead of a 6x6 grid, Let's look at it as a 2 by 2 grid first. There is only one way to get to the step on the right and only one way to get to the step below. To get to the bottom right point, you can either come from the top or come from the left. So the total number of ways must be 1 plus 1, which is 2. What about the 3 by 3 grid? Notice there is still only one way to get to the top right point and one way to get to the bottom left point. Each other point is the sum of the number of ways to get to the points that it can come from. For example, 2 plus 1 equals to 3, 1 plus 2 equals to 3, and to get to the bottom right point, it will be 3 plus 3, which is 6 different ways. After you have detected this pattern, the tedious part here is to fill up the entire 6 by 6 grid. A few moments later. Using this algorithm, you can find that the total number of ways to get from point A to point B is 252. There is, however, another method to solve this using permutations and combinations. The basic idea is that you would need 10 steps to get from A to B. 5 of them must be down and 5 of them must be right. So the total number of ways would be 10 choose 5, or 252. I will go into more detail of this second method when we reach the topic of permutations and combinations. So, did you get the answer? Let's get back to our first topic for today, Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is constructed exactly the same way as the puffing problem we encountered in question 1. Pascal's triangle is a number pattern where each term is the sum of the two terms above it. For example, 1 plus 2 equals to 3. Using this algorithm, here are the first six rows. What you can try now is to complete the next row and look for patterns in Pascal's triangle. In the info section, I've included a Pascal's triangle worksheet that you can print and play along with. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. So first check if you've completed the next row correctly. Now let's look at some beautiful patterns hidden. If we take the sum of each row, we would get 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. Notice that these are the powers of 2. If we concatenate the numbers in each row together, we would get 1, 11, 121, 1331, and so on. For numbers that are two digits, you have to carry over the tens. This sequence of numbers are the powers of 11. If we look at this diagonal, these numbers are the triangular numbers that we've covered in the previous episode on arithmetic progression. The first number is 1, the second number 3 is equal to 1 plus 2, 6 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on. Each of these numbers are the successive sums of natural numbers. If we look at the adjacent diagonal, the numbers 1, 4, 10, and 20 are pyramidal numbers. These are the sum of triangular numbers. They can be expressed visually as an increasing stack of balls 
in a pyramidal shape. If we take the sum along a different diagonal, the first one gets us 1, then 1, then 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, then 5, and 8, and 13. This pattern is the Fibonacci sequence. Of course, the pattern that we are most concerned with today is how this connects to binomial theorem. If you look at x plus y to the power of 0, you will get 1. x plus y to the power of 1 is 1x plus 1y. x plus y squared is 1x squared plus 2xy plus 1y squared. If we look at the cube, x plus y cubed is 1x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus 1y cubed. In fact, each power of x plus y, the coefficients of the expansion will follow Pascal's triangle. Take the expansion of x plus y to the power of 4. You will see that the coefficients follow Pascal's triangle 14641. The powers of x will descend as the powers of y ascend along the row. The sum of the powers of x and y would always be 4, a constant. This is the general formula for the binomial theorem to expand x plus y to the power of n. The general term is n choose r times x to the power of n minus r times y to the power of r, where n choose r is n factorial divided by r factorial and n minus r factorial. Here are some practice questions to see if you can use binomial theorem to expand the following polynomials. Pause the video here and give these three questions a good try. Here are the answers to check against. With the practice questions out of the way, let's look at some proper Olympiad questions. Question number two. Given that alpha, beta and gamma are the roots of the equation 15 minus x cubed plus 11 minus x cubed equals to 26 minus 2x cubed, Find the values of the sum of the roots, alpha plus beta plus gamma. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go into the solution. Now before you do some trigger-happy expansions here, it would be a good idea to make a useful observation. Notice that 15 minus x plus 11 minus x nicely gives you 26 minus 2x. So, we could possibly simplify this problem with some nifty substitution. If we let a equals to 15 minus x, b equals to 11 minus x, and a plus b will be equals to 26 minus 2x, we sub them in, we get a cubed plus b cubed equals to a plus b cubed. Using binomial theorem, we can expand the right hand side and cancel out the a cubed and b cubes on both sides then factorize out a 3ab to see that either a equals to 0, b equals to 0, or a plus b equals to 0. This translates to either 15 minus x equals to 0, 11 minus x equals to 0, or 26 minus 2x equals to 0. That tells us that the three roots are 11, 13, and 15. Hence, the sum of the roots must be 39. So, did you get the answer? Question number 3. Find the least integer that is greater than 2 plus root 3 to the power of 4. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Now, to solve this problem, we could try expanding this third with binomial theorem. However, you will notice a slight problem as the second and fourth term cannot be evaluated without a calculator. What we could do here is to expand the conjugate third by the same power of 4. Notice now that the second and fourth term, highlighted in red, have opposite signs. This is helpful because if we add the two rows together, the irrational terms in the red boxes would cancel out. We can further evaluate the right hand side until we get 194. If we observe the left hand side, you would notice that 2 minus root 3 is less than 1. And if you raise it to the power of 4, it would still be less than 1. That must mean that 2 plus root 3 is somewhere between 193 and 194. So it should be a number slightly smaller than 194. 
Therefore, the smallest number larger than 2 plus root 3 to the power of 4 is 194. So, did you get the answer? Question number 4. Find the remainder when 2019 to the power of 2019 is divided by 101. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. Now the standard way to solve remainder problems is using modulo arithmetic, which we will cover in a later lecture. But for this simple question, we just need to observe that 2020 is divisible by 101. So by expressing 2019 as 2020 minus 1, we can perform the binomial expansion for this expression. Now it is completely unnecessary to expand this binomial expansion fully and get all 2020 terms. It is only important to note that every term has the number 2020 in it, except for the last term. So the remainder has to be negative 1. But we don't typically accept negative remainders, so we need to borrow a 101 from the previous terms to add to the negative 1 to get a remainder of 100. So, did you get the answer? Question number 5. Find the sum of the coefficients of the polynomial 4x squared plus 3x minus 5 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by 7 minus 3x minus x squared whole thing cubed. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Now, if you're thinking of binomial expansion, that is insanity. That will give rise to 6,561 different terms before finally consolidating all the like terms to get down to the final 17 terms. Think through to the end, what is it that we want? We just want the sum of the coefficients. That is the same as letting x equals to 1. It really doesn't matter when we substitute x equals to 1. We could plonk it right at the start. By doing it at the beginning, we skipped all the expansion and after evaluation, the sum of the coefficients will be 864. So, did you get the answer? So here are some extension problems that you can try that are similar to what I've covered today. In the first problem, you'll need to count the number of ways to travel from point A to point B but there are some missing edges which will complicate the calculations. Here's problem 2. It is similar to problem 1 but on a 6x8 grid and I'm adding a further restriction. That is, you must start and end with different directions. For example, if you start with a rightward movement, you have to end with a down step. Here are problems 3 to 5. And lastly, problems 6 and 7. Do give these questions a good try. The answers will be posted in the info section when the next lecture is uploaded. With that, we've come to the end of episode 13. Stay tuned for episode 14 where we will explore power sums. Thank you and have a great day of learning.